We've been in the Netherlands for over a year now, and we've successfully moved to a new city, visited the doctor, and experienced a year's worth of inflation. It felt like this was a good time to make a new video about our cost of living here in the Netherlands. How much does it cost to live here? Can we afford to live in the Netherlands, or are we being taxed out of our minds? Stick around to find out. Today's an update video. We just surpassed our one year anniversary of living in the Netherlands, and it's interesting and overwhelming to think about all of the things that we've learned in the past year. But for this video, we're just gonna stick to finances. We're gonna give y'all an update on our monthly expenses. Then we're gonna cover some things we missed or just straight up got wrong in our last cost of living video. Our grocery budget hasn't really changed much since moving to the Netherlands. In our most recent grocery store video, we talked about how we wanna save more. And we're going to do that, but we're not quite there yet. We eat most meals at home unless we're traveling for the vlog. So our monthly grocery expenses are usually around 500 euros. And I also just want to note, some of y'all said that our grocery budget every month is a little high, but that includes paper products, cat litter, cat food. It, it's not just how much we're spending at Albert Hein. It's basically everything that we're lumping into a grocery category as like cleaning supplies, cleaning supplies all as of two that individuals with two cats and assuming that we're not budget shopping at like multiple shops and putting that in a different category. This is all pretty self-contained. Our cats eat a lot. They do. Especially, Especially pants. The and speaking of traveling for our vlogs, let's talk about transit costs. This there is, a lot. Yeah, this is probably <laughs> also like the most variable category that we have because we travel a lot for our videos. So if we have a big travel month, the cost goes up quite a bit. And in the last few months, our costs have been exceptionally high because we were looking to move outside of Rotterdam and some of those cities that we looked at are pretty far away. Yeah, they were pretty far away. So it costs quite a bit. We do have a monthly subscription for NS, which is the train company here in the Netherlands. And that can save you quite a bit of money. You can get a subscription that gives you cheaper rides on the weekends, mm -hmm. cheaper rides during off hours. They can give you a, a full free fare on a certain route. You can even pay so much that you get an entirely free, like everything every month, which it's very expensive to do that. <laughs> we do the Dalv Ordeal subscription. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, but it gives us 40% off the fare in all off peak hours and weekends. So we do save a little bit in that regard and we do try to avoid traveling during peak hours. Just wanna call that out. We could be saving a lot more, but the reality is, is that the way that we travel for the vlog, it's kind of hard to predict what we are going to need in a given month. So here's what our total cost looks like for transit in the last three months. And this is combined for both of us. In March, we spent 124 euros. In April, we spent 353 euros. And in May, we spent 416 euros. And that was due to mainly- Multiple trips of Michelle going to Daventer during peak hours. Yeah, that was a really expensive trip. It was. In our new home, we pay for water, gas, and electricity. Our previous apartment was gas-free, so paying gas is sort of new to us. Not like it's remarkably different or difficult, but something we haven't done yet in the yeah. Netherlands. Our gas and water payments are paid with the rent each month, so our rent is inclusive of gas and water payments. And the total for both of those is 185 euros per month. Our electricity payment's 80 euros per month. I do want to call out, we talked about this in the cost of living video, but the electricity payment is an estimate based yes. on what they perceive to be your usage. Oh, and then you kind of square up at the end of your like contract, which is usually 12 months. At least that's like, I think what the new contract terms are. And either they're gonna give you a refund because your monthly payment was overestimated, or you're gonna have to owe more because your monthly payment was underestimated. And to be clear, that's when they check your actual meter. So they check your actual usage and then that's when they bill you the proper amount. Let's talk about health insurance. There aren't a lot of changes here. This is mostly an anecdotal update as to the things we've learned over the past year with healthcare here in the Netherlands. You pay for your healthcare annually, but it ends up being 299 euros per month for the both of us. You can save money on your health insurance payment by paying a little bit less and increasing that Eichen Risiko. There you go. <laughs> every month. And we do plan on doing that. The reason that we didn't do that this year is we weren't really sure how much certain things were going to cost. And we wanted to see what those costs were so that at the end of the year, we could make a more informed decision on what actually makes the most sense where we're not going to be paying more out of pocket based on the things that we already know that we are going to have to do over the course of a year. We were and playing it safe. We were playing it safe. Another good example of this is Michelle has an add on on her healthcare plan, unlike me, because birth control and at least for our insurance company is not covered after the age of 32. And Michelle's kind of old. <laughs> 
So for whatever I'm 33, reason, so it's fine. <laughs> for whatever reason, they just decided that that was the cutoff. And in that case, birth control is covered because of this add on. I have a very strong hunch that the cost of the birth control prescription full cost is not going to be more than the amount that we're paying for her add-on every month this year. But we spent some time trying to look up how much birth control here costs without having that extra add-on. We couldn't figure and it out. I couldn't. Yeah, we couldn't so again, figure it out. We're just going to run it for the rest of the year, see what happens, do the math, and then we'll next year probably save a little bit of money. Yeah. Hopefully. Oh, and we don't have dental. I am pretty sure based on the research that I did do that a cleaning or like an annual checkup at the dentist's office is not more than the amount of money that we would wait is not more than the amount of money that we would pay for the additional dental coverage in the healthcare plan. So we decided to forego that. Although to be fair, we still have not been to the dentist yet. We really need to do that. And we've both been to multiple doctor's visits along with some specialist visits, and we've never had to pay anything extra either. It's the treatments and the prescriptions and the things like that that go to your health insurance. <laughs> Moving on to internet and cell phones. So we've kept the same service. We still have T-Mobile here in the Netherlands. And what we've done is since we moved, we actually got T-Mobile home internet as well. And the reason you do that is because you save a lot of money by combining everything together. So for cell phone service, we pay 29 euros each. And for home internet service, we have gigabit internet. So obviously you can get much cheaper and it's 40 euros per month. I also want to note 29 euros per, per month for cell phone service is a little high. However, we both individually have the add-on that allows us to have unlimited calling and texting back to the United States. So if you don't need that, your cost would be cheaper. Got to stay in touch with friends and family. That's right. And then I also want to talk about bookkeeping and bookkeeping is only really relevant if you are self-employed. And in the last cost of living video, I said bookkeeping is required. It's not required. I strongly recommend getting a bookkeeper, especially if you're here because of the Dutch American Friendship Treaty, because having good bookkeeping is super important to a smooth renewal process. And you just don't want to mess with that. I pay 58 euros per month and that gives me all the bookkeeping services that I need. And that also covers the annual taxes that you need to submit as a self-employed individual here in the Netherlands. So it feels pretty worth it just for that peace of mind and just knowing that someone's making sure I'm doing everything correctly. And they answer your questions and stuff like yeah. that too. So if Which you will have questions. Yes. But again, not required. Strongly recommend it. In our first cost of living video, we are getting all of these random bills from the city of Rotterdam and other places. And honestly, we weren't quite sure what they were for. I, I think we even mentioned that like one of them was the property taxes yeah. for the apartment that we were living, which was definitely wrong. But a year later, I think we finally figured out what all those random tax bills are for. We still get bills and we still pay them. And we're not 100% sure what they are, but we're starting to figure it out. Yeah, like we do the research afterwards and we're like, okay, yeah, that was a legit bill. <laughs> we haven't gotten a legitimate bill yet that we're aware of. We're not sure if this is going to be cheaper now that we live in Dordrecht, so we're just going to use all of the numbers from when we lived in Rotterdam. So the first bill was a waterboard bill, and for 2023, we paid 359 euros and 78 cents. Wow, it's very specific. It is. And we paid a city of Rotterdam waste tax, which was 354 euros and 60 cents. Again, very specific. Last but not least, well, this isn't really last. This is kind of like the whole last segment. Yeah. The biggest change is that we moved. Y'all had a lot of opinions about our last apartment and how much we were paying. And we did end up doing an apartment tour video. So if you want to see what that apartment was and what we were spending 2,500 euros a month on, check it out. I'm always really bad at remembering the direction where the YouTube puts the thing. I think it's here. Oh, okay. We moved to Dordrecht, which is a much less expensive city compared to Rotterdam. Not a lot less. We pay less rent. I think we pay a lot less. Actually, you're right. We pay a lot less. Yeah, rent. we pay a lot less rent. I still think our rent is expensive for Dordrecht, but for us, it feels quite inexpensive. That's true. And also, to make it even better, it's inexpensive or less expensive. And we've been here for a month now, and it really feels like home. So all that said, our rent for our new place in Dordrecht is 1,715 euros per month, which again, still expensive, but we're saving almost a thousand euros per month compared to our place in Rotterdam. I also want to note that our apartment is part of the free sector. In the Netherlands, there's essentially two classifications of apartments. There's also social housing, and those have a point system associated with them. And the points basically tell you how much they're allowed to charge for it. 
they can still overcharge. There is a housing shortage and people are doing some crazy shit. But in general, it's much more regulated. In our last cost of living video, we got a ton of comments that seemed like there was a huge variation in what people pay for rent, even just in the same city. Yeah, and I think mortgages also change the yep. equation here quite a bit. <laughs> like if you're actually buying your home or you bought your home a long time ago, you can save a lot of money. And I think right now you can also just save a lot of money by buying a house, period. The other thing that came up a lot in the comments from our last cost of living video was just, are you going to mention the difference in how much you're getting paid or how much you're getting taxed in the Netherlands versus the United States? And I mean, yeah, it is a cost of living video. I'll give you that. Probably should have mentioned it, but we had just moved here. A lot of that stuff you don't really understand until you pay your annual taxes. But also like our salaries had changed just based on other life circumstances too. So it was yeah, kind of it was to... hard to actually like do the, the yeah. math. All right, listen, I have done this math for taxes now three times. There was a whole segment that I did for the video. Michelle was right here and I looked at it and I was like, this is way too oversimplified. This isn't helpful. And then I just sat up here planning to re-record it. I did all the math and I still think it's oversimplified. The reality is in the Netherlands, you're taxed more than you are in the United States on your income. There's also other factors to consider like earnings that you have from savings and investments, from properties that you may own. It's not any different than in the United States. It is different. But I guess what I'm saying is that taxes are really complicated. If you're watching this video and you are planning a move to the Netherlands, I highly recommend talking to a tax advisor before you leave. We're probably getting taxed about double what we were on our income in the United States. But again, that's not including tax credits. That's not really the whole picture. It's just really hard to explain. I'll link you to an article that explains how the Netherlands tax system works in the description. Hopefully it'll help. But again, talk to a tax advisor they're going to know what they're talking about way more than me. Okay, here's a chart that shows all of our costs pre move to the Netherlands and currently. I think one of the most surprising things for me is the transit costs. Even though transit is expensive here, it is still quite a bit cheaper than what we are paying for all aspects of transit when we lived in the United States. And that's a car insurance and gas. And we only had one car when we moved. Yes. If we had two cars or view of two cars, it's still going to be cheaper. I think the thing that's interesting to me, and I mentioned this last year in the cost of living video, my surprise has not changed. Healthcare costs are just so cheap here. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's just really nice to know that as a self-employed person or a self-employed couple that we can pay and afford the healthcare costs here and get good healthcare. Yep. Whereas the United States, the cost for self-employed people to get health insurance is bananas. Yeah, this would have not been a sustainable lifestyle for no. us in the United States. Absolutely not. And that's it. That's our updated expenses video. This was one of our first and most popular videos when we first moved here. And we ended it with one question. Does anything on here surprise you? Let us know in the comments. Yeah, same question for this video. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same question. <laughs> if you want to watch a video where we talk about all of the things that we love about the Netherlands, we're going to put that on the screen right here. Give it a watch. But as always, thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Doei. Doei. Doei.